Hi and thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're going to take a step backward and talk about some basics today. We're going to do an overview of the three main welding processes or types of welding and that will be TIG, STICK, and MIG. There's all kinds of other different uh, different kinds of welding like plasma, arc welding, gas welding, electron beam, laser, resistance welding and all that but what you and I are going to do most of is either going to be TIG, STICK, or MIG. I'm pretty sure that you don't have a laser welder or electron beam welder in your garage, but you might have a TIG stick or MIG welder. So let's talk about them and just uh, what they're good for and limitations and everything. Like anything, you can get big machines and you can get little machines or anything in between. They have one 15 volt machines strictly limited on amperage to maybe 90 amps, or you can go all the way up to a 300 or higher amperage machine. And uh, you can get an inverter TIG welder with all kinds of features on it like that. TIG welding is versatile. You can weld carbon and low alloy steels like 4130 chromoly tubing. Stainless steel of all kinds, 300 series, pretty much any one, 17.4, 15.5, it doesn't matter. Nickel based alloys uh, like Inconel 718 or Inconel 625 or just uh, all kinds of other for aircraft parts. Aluminum alloys like 6061, 3003, 5052. Good applications for aluminum uh, is adding a, a pad like that for a broken off lug on a transmission housing. All kinds of other aluminum applications, magnesium uh, castings like a gearbox housing, titanium of all kinds for uh, motorsports equipment and racing and uh, golf clubs and everything. And what's popular in the, in the automotive industry is using a silicon bronze type filler for welding steel. Now. It can weld thicknesses uh, pretty much unlimited as long as you put multi-pass in all the way down to really thin material like coke cans and razor blades. TIG welding is probably the most versatile welding process that there is. Very popular in the aerospace and aviation industry and the food service industry for cleanliness of stainless steel beverage products and uh, stainless steel piping. Now, limitations of TIG welding, it is relatively slow compared to MIG and stick, and the metal has to be pretty clean. You can't just weld over rust and mill scale and everything like you can with uh, other processes. So we'll move on to MIG welding. MIG welding is a little faster. It is uh, probably the best thing for general fabrication because it is fast. Again, you can you can you can you can uh, get a MIG welder in a 115 volt small model, or you can get a full blown industrial size capable of running larger wires and higher amperages. MIG welding feeds the wire off a spool through drive rollers. It, the metal does not have to be as clean as for TIG. It always helps to have it as clean as you can, but sometimes just not practical to clean mill scale off something if you're fabricating, and it welds through it pretty well. We'll also weld aluminum uh, by adding a spool gun to the mix so that you can feed that soft aluminum wire and you can weld stainless steels and a variety of a variety of thicknesses. The thin auto body panel type thicknesses are best done with a 115 volt MIG welder. A, a misconception is that flux core wire is uh, pretty much for only 115 volt welders, but that's not true. It is an industrial uh, process. Flux core is used for heavy earth moving equipment for construction of skyscrapers and structural welds. Here's a joint that's a flux core on the bottom and a bare wire MIG on the top. And uh, flux core is a uh, high deposition, high quality process in the hands of a skilled operator. Stick welding. Stick welding uses a stick electrode that's got flux on the outside. When the flux melts, it creates gases and creates a, a, a slag covering that protects the molten metal like the shielding gas does. You can get small stick welders, plug into a 115 volt, or move up to a larger size that plug into 230 like this buzz box or a full-blown industrial size ACDC uh, uh, higher amperage stick welder that can be used for welding pipe of all kinds or any, anything. If you have just nothing but an AC welder, do yourself a favor, get some 6011 rod. They'll dig through rust and, and all kinds of mill scale and uh, work great with a buzz box. Stick welding is a robust process, will never go away, not in my lifetime anyway, because it's so simple and so effective. And you can weld out in the misting rain and in the in gusty winds. You can weld over mill scale without having to have the metal perfectly clean. It's a little bit messier of a process, but definitely a robust process. Capable of putting down x ray quality welds without having to have conditions uh, just right. 
One popular use for stick welding is pipe. Now a lot of people ask me, do people do any stick welding anymore? I mean, hasn't MIG welding and flux core just pretty much done away with stick welding? And I guess, you know, if you haven't been uh, exposed to industries and construction and pipe welding, you might think that. But the reason is stick welding is so portable, it's so simple. You need, you need a machine, a stick lead, a stinger, and a stick rod, and then you're, you're good to go. And, and it, all you need there on out is skill. And uh, multi-pass welds on heavy wall piping like this is still done all the time with a uh, good old 7018 rod and a stick welder because it is so it is so simple it's a simple piece of equipment you can change from one alloy to another just by pretty much changing rods and maybe changing your amperage and so uh, there's your overview of stick tig and mig thanks for watching weldingtipsandtricks.com